Sky 10 has some really exciting features that came from real use cases from instructors that were percolated up to the instructional designers to the IT staff at institutions. So if I could focus on two tools, one would be assignments. And so uh, Duke University about two years ago decides that they, that they have this huge use case for group submitted uh, assignments. And so um, the use case of uh, one person on behalf of a group uh, submitting an assignment and then instructor being able to give the entire group uh, a grade with the ability to override, uh, that made it into trunk. Um, and is now being distributed as, as part of Sakai 10. Another feature would be uh, peer review. So NYU found this, uh, it came from directly from faculty. It went up the chain at NYU and became a prioritized feature. Uh, Longsite did the work on behalf of NYU. There was a lot of back and forth. Uh, I would describe it as very close to agile development in that um, you know, we have a we have a core idea of what we're looking for, um, but you know, let's let's get to it and let's start modifying the code and, and let's have you know a very close feedback loop in between NYU and Longsight. Uh, let's iterate on the feature and then let's also uh, once we have something, let's bring this back into the community and make it clear that NYU and Longsight are working on this feature. Uh, let's get some community feedback uh, in there. Let's get community translations to other languages. Um, um, and then it becomes part of Trunk, it becomes part of our formal QA process, and then it makes it into a formal release like Sakai 10.0. initially involved in analytics back in early 2013 because we generally try to keep an eye on what specs are, are happening. This is back before Caliper and when ADL was working on Experience API. And we were sort of looking at it from the perspective of how can we get data between systems without having to always invent our own API. And it seemed like, hey, these guys have at least a concept and they're heading in the right direction. So. The goal really initially was just let's have a transport mechanism that we can reuse on a few projects because it saves us some time. And it wasn't really focused on learning analytics, it was rather just focused on data gathering, simply just how can we gather data and eventually do something with that stuff. And as we went along in that project, we kind of discovered that there were actually a lot of neat, neat applications, a lot of neat things actually happening outside of what we were doing that we could just take that data and apply to it. And so. The, the initial project funding was simply hook this thing into Sakai so we can get data back out of it. And later grew into, wait, now that we have that data, what can we do with it? Or wait, we actually want to get data out of uPortal. That's, that'll work. We want to get data out of OEE. That'll work. And started expanding into just different ways of getting data. Uh, number one would be huge caching improvements. So in Sakai 10, um, we have the ability to have a shared cache instead of having a local EH cache per instance. Um, and part of caching was we also put a lot of attention on caches and how caches work and how invalidation works. Um, it's one of those areas of code that needs attention every, every couple of years and we gave it a whole lot of attention this time. Uh, number two would be Elasticsearch. So the huge contribution from uh, John Bush uh, and, uh, and Asahi. So they came through and we had a legacy search system using Lucene. Um, didn't perform well across a large cluster. So you have a typical institution that's running, say, eight Sakai nodes. Um, you know, how do you, how do you do it? Do you have one instance only that is responsible for uh, indexing all of the content? Um, but in any event, Elasticsearch is this incredible upstream project with a great license that understands uh, sharding and clustering and discovery and has admin tools and is used by uh, lots of startups and is getting a ton of attention. So the ability to get something like Elasticsearch in uh, that is highly performant and works great ac uh, across a cluster is really exciting. Um, Number three, I would say general improvements um, in kernel code, in retrieval of sites, 
Um, there's just a whole lot of attention being paid these days in sort of core kernel parts. Um, and that attention is happening from multiple higher ed institutions and it's also happening from uh, all three of the major uh, commercial vendors. So Unicon, uh, Unicon Asahi, Longsite um, are all paying a lot of attention to see, you know, these core parts of, uh, of the Sakai code. One of the things that we as a community have been working on is, is analyzing sessions in particular. So where is session data, where, where are different aspects of memory usage happening? And, and one of the major things that we found was loads of data just being poured into the session. Um, you could be as large as 80 megabytes in Sakai 2.9. And we've really ratcheted that down to, to far less than one megabyte, which means your memory usage drops off dramatically, especially for longer sessions, you know, users who are going on and using the system for hours on end. Um, so there, there's a reduction in the memory requirements. You're not going to see really much reduction in processing because processing is processing. And generally speaking, if you watch app server load, it's pretty low most of the time anyway. But memory load is where you really start to, to see gains. And that, that can be really beneficial because you don't need as many nodes. Since nodes, generally speaking, are not even close to a CPU max, you can actually run with less nodes because you can start making better use of the memory on each node. Unicon did a little bit of work where we made it so the configuration service could actually pull data from multiple places so that a tool could actually adjust its own configuration if it needed to. Um, instead of it being a one-time registration, it's actually, I need to go and make changes to it. And then A and I had some, some code and we worked together to actually get the database storage of configuration hooked into that process so now the writing happens but it comes from the database. Um, and then Longsight helped test all of that together to make sure it was all working. We all communicated pretty much daily for a couple of weeks, got all the bugs worked out, and now it's part of 2.10. Uh, and the next step will be building a nice interface, and I'm sure we'll end up working together on that. And it's not, you know, there's no, how are we going to get something out of this? You know, where's the money coming from to pay for this? It's just, let's work together and get it done, and, and it's really actually nice. It's very community-oriented.